All right. I only have a few slides on gastroenterology, mainly concentrating on inflammatory bowel disease. So between Crohn's disease and uh, that other one, you see, thanks. Which one involves the terminal ileum? Crohn's, good. And remember, the symptoms can mimic appendicitis, and because it involves the ileum, they can have iron deficiency anemia. Um, continuous and involving the rectum, UC or Crohn's? That's UC. Who has an increased risk for primary sclerosis and cholangitis? UC. Who's more likely to have fistulae? Crohn's. And anytime you see a fistula, metronidazole is the drug of choice. Who has granulomas? Crohn's. Who has transmural inflammation? Crohn's. Who's cured by colectomy? UC. Who has a lower risk if they smoke? UC. UC. So smoking increases the risk for Crohn's, decreases the risk for UC. Um, and which one gives you a higher risk of colon cancer? You see, that's another reason they can be cured by colectomy and it can prevent the, the colon cancer that they have an increased risk for. And then which one is associated with P. Anca? You see, good. Okay, so treatment, um, ASA, sulfasalazine um, can maintain remission. Corticosteroids is given during a flare to induce remission. And as I said, metronidazole for any ulcer or abscess in a patient with Crohn's. So some pictures you might see. Um, this is an abdominal x-ray. I don't know if you can see that. The arrows are trying to point to some badness in the wall of the colon. This is toxic megacolon. This is pneumocystis intestinalis, air in the wall of the colon. Hard to appreciate on this chest x-ray, but you can see it's widely dilated, right? This looks bad. So this is toxic megacolon, uh, a surgical emergency. What about this barium study? That's string signs. So what is this? You see your Crohn's? Crohn's, more likely in Crohn's. What's this badness? Pyoderma gangrenosum. Should we give antibiotics for this? Looks like a horrible uh, bacterial abscess, right? So we give we give antibiotics, right? No, no. You treat the underlying UC, and this will get better. Don't IND it. Don't give antibiotics. It's not an infection. This is just granulation tissue and white blood cells. And then these little guys, they're on the anterior, anterior tibia. They're painful. Erythema nodosum. So these were also in our sarcoid patient, and they're also present in patients with UC. All right, so LFT buzzwords. What would give you an AST um, bigger than your ALT and a high GGT? It's what you're doing after the shelf, right? You're drinking alcoholic hepatitis. What if your ALT is greater than your AST and they're both in the thousands? Thinking about a virus. If your AST and ALT are both in the thousands, but you just had major surgery, cardiac surgery, or you were just in a horrible car accident. Shock liver. Yes, so that's ischemic hepatitis. Um, shock liver can be confused with viral hepatitis, but you don't have that characteristic ALT greater than AST. Um, what do you think of when your D-billy is elevated? Obstruction. Yeah, I think it's something wrong with the biliary tract, gallbladder, uh, something of that nature. There are also some randoms, right? Dubin's, Johnson's, and Rotor from USMLE Step 1. So um, what about elevated indirect bilirubin? Gilbert, very good. And Kriegler and Najjar, right? Those are the two randoms. Uh, what's more common? Hemolysis. Hemolysis. So hemolysis is more common. The two randoms are Gilbert's and Kriegler and Najjar syndrome. So, um, okay. So what if on your LFTs you see elevated ALKFOS and elevated GGT? That's obstruction, right? The ALK boss is pretty nonspecific, but the GGT tells you the problems with the ducts. Um, and what if the ALK boss is elevated, GGT is normal, and calcium is also normal? Pregnancy? Mm. So what if you're an old man? What? Yes, Paget's disease. Very good. So it also might be an old dude who has to buy a bigger hat because his skull is getting thicker. Um, hearing loss is also common because the little ossicles get all screwed up because uh, of the, the disease. So 
Good. Paget's disease. What if the anti-mitochondrial antibody is positive? PBC, also more common in ulcerative colitis. Uh, what if the anti-smooth muscle antibody is positive? That's autoimmune hepatitis. The difference here, you can treat autoimmune hepatitis with steroids, but it really doesn't help with PBC. So that's a, a, an important treatment difference. So what if you see high iron, low ferritin, and low uh, iron binding capacity, and a screwed up liver? That's hemochromatosis. They also might be diabetic and have that kind of golden skin color. Uh, and as we kind of hinted to earlier, we treat this with phlebotomy, getting rid of some of the, the iron that's overloaded. And what if the cer ceruloplasmin is low and the urinary copper excretion is high? Yes, Wilson's. So um, these patients have hepatitis. They might also have some psychiatric symptoms, mainly because the copper likes to deposit in the basal ganglia. Um, and then you can see those common Kaiser-Fleischer rings in the cornea.